everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, due to popular demand, we're going to talk about adding smart audio to the Ishin Tyro 79. When I work on these projects, I typically take my skill set for granted. I have been working with technology all of my adult life. As a matter of fact, uh, my first job was in tech when I was about 15 years old, and I've been doing it ever since. So as I roll through these videos and I teach you guys techniques, if you feel I've ever missed anything, please feel free to reach out. If I get enough feedback on it, like in this case with the smart audio on the Tiro, I'll do you guys a video. And in actuality, that makes my job much easier because you guys tell me what you want and if possible, I just deliver. Before we actually get rolling on things, let's take a quick trip through the internet and I'm gonna show you a couple of resources that could be helpful. I've headed over to Banggood's website and I've brought up the webpage for the VTX that comes with the Tyro 79. There's a few things over here that I wanna point out to you. One of which is we're gonna need to know how to wire this thing. And chances are, if you go to the webpage that you bought your VTX from, you're probably gonna get some useful information. In this case, we can see what every pin in this connector is. We have VBAT, ground, RX, this is our smart audio. We have the video input, five volts, and ground. All right, so we know exactly what all these are. And I'll explain how these are wired up once we get the quad apart, but just understand what we have here, right? You get this, ground, five volts, video in, RX, another ground, and your battery power input, right? So if we scroll a little bit further, we're gonna get another image of the VTX, and we're gonna see that we have identical pads on the back side of the VTX. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is essentially we have two options to make our connection. And depending on what you have available for resources, this is going to determine essentially whether you're going to solder to the back side of this board or if you're going to add a wire to this connector. Truthfully, I think the easiest method is just to add the missing wire. However, you're going to need parts to do that. That's okay. These connectors and wire kits are readily available. In fact, I've got one right over here to show you. This is from CL Racing. And by the way, this company, CL Racing, is actually local to me. I race with the owner of this company very frequently, so that's kind of a cool fun fact. But anyway, I want to show you this wiring kit that he sells. Uh, let's just scroll down a little bit, we can see a little bit more clearly. So you get bundles of wires, three different lengths, uh, but you also get a handful of these connectors. And having one of these kits can be an invaluable resource if you're making custom cables. However, if you've been doing this long enough, chances are you're going to have a surplus of all these cables, wires, and connectors. A lot of the devices that we purchase might come with an additional, maybe it's a different type of wiring harness for a different type of installation, but that doesn't mean that we can't save that and reuse it for something else. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here today. I don't need to buy one of those kits. You can say I have a handful, and I'm going to show you how to pull one of the wires out of these in order to be able to add it to our existing harness, or just in general to be able to reconfigure one of these. The last resource that I would like to utilize on Banggood's website is this image of the flight controller that came in the Tiro 79 kit. When we look at this image, we're gonna see that there's silk screening on here indicating all kinds of important things regarding our connections on our flight controller. And this is what we're looking for right here, this TX2 pad. We're gonna have to solder to this be aware that this is a very small pad, so you're probably gonna to wanna to be good and practiced up before you even attempt this. So we know our resources, we know we're gonna be using TX2 because UART1 is used for our receiver, and that's about it. I think we're ready to take this thing apart and go over some wiring. I'm a fan of these connectors that our flight controller typically uses because it's very easy to manipulate and change the configuration. In fact, it's super easy to remove a wire and reinstall it anywhere you need to, or just extract that wire and install it into an existing connector. So I'm gonna show you how to get this wire out of here. In this case, I'm gonna take the green one because that might be, you know, a color we'd use for smart audio. If we look at this tab, I'm hoping you can see this in the overhead. Just get something underneath it, lift it up a little bit, and then the wire should literally slide right out. After I've extracted it, I like to just push that tab down a little bit to make sure it's back in place. 
And you also want to make sure that you don't overextend these when you're pulling the wire out. If you bend this tab all the way backwards and it's standing straight up, at that point it's broken and it is no longer going to retain the wire properly. Inserting the wire is very simple. If you look closely at this connector, you're going to see there's a loop on one side and then on the top side there's a hook. That hook on the top side of this terminal is what is going to latch inside the plastic connector. So you need to make sure that that hook is facing in the direction of the retainer in your plug. Once you have that figured out, it's literally just a matter of sliding that wire in there. I'm going to move it to the outside edge just so you guys can see how easy it is to do this. Just literally push it right in there. And sometimes in order to get it all the way in, you might need something to give it a little bit of help and push it all the way in. Once you have the wire inserted all the way into the connector, make sure that tab is depressed and the locking part of the pin is making contact and it's being held into that connector. Afterwards, I like to give the wire just a little bit of a tug to make sure it's not going to pull out of there. Don't pull on this too hard, just a little bit to make sure that it's not going to fall out of the connector. Now that the quad is opened up, hopefully you can see how I've added the green wire to the stock connector for the VTX. So I have my green wire, my new wire, which is now Smart Audio. I have video, I have five volts, which in this case is being used as a five volt input, and then I have ground. Also, if I flip the VTX over, you're gonna see that I have the corresponding pads on the bottom side. So if we look here, in this case it's called data. Data, that's Smart Audio. Video, our video in. This is labeled five volt out, but again, by the factory, they were back feeding five volts to power this. This is okay. We're just not using the internal regulator in the VTX. We're just using the regulator and the flight controller instead. And then way down here by itself, we have a ground. We could have used this ground pin just fine, but for whatever reason, they chose this one from the factory. So if you remember, this RX or data wire, this is what we're after. So essentially, add the wire to the connector or solder on here. If yours is called RX, solder on that RX. But essentially, that's what you're dealing with. Your kit might be a little different. I don't know what you have, so you may need to make a decision on this. Once you have all this situated, all you're going to do is then solder that wire that you added for smart audio to the TX2 pad on the flight controller. And you can see on my case, it's all the way over here, right by the USB. Now in contrast, the pads to solder the VTX to the flight controller are on the underside of this board. I'm not gonna take this whole thing apart. Those pads are clearly labeled on the flight controller itself, so hopefully you can figure that out. Five volts, video, ground, all that good stuff. If you did use the stock connector, that came with the kit in order to connect the VTX to the flight controller. You can still do that in the same fashion. There is an extra pin on here for the VTX. I'm not sure what that is. So just to be safe, I would recommend just wiring your smart audio connector separately to the flight controller right here on this TX2 pad. You will still have the ability to easily remove the VTX if you so decide, if it's installed in this way. Of course, if you direct solder to the bottom, you may lose the ability to be able to remove the VTX quickly. Once we're satisfied with our wiring, we can shoot on over to Betaflight and finish the setup. Once you've successfully connected, just shoot on over to the ports tab. And right here on UART2, this is the line we're after, we're gonna go all the way over to the right hand side and we're gonna make this selection here, VTX TBS Smart Audio. Just simply click on that Save and reboot, and that's it with the beta flight. And that's how I added Smart Audio to my Ishin Tyro 79. As long as you've got everything set up and installed correctly, that should be it. At this point, you should either be able to control your VTX via Lua script 
or change your channel in the OSD. But I think that's all we're going to do for today. Thanks to Banggood for sending me this Isheen Tyro 79 kit. I'm having an absolute blast with it. Make sure you guys check the links in the description if you want to get one for yourself. So I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.